Hey guys, it's Shannon with Our Piece of Earth. Sorry I haven't had a new video for you in a while. My computer was dying and I just finally got it replaced. So because it's been so long, I actually have a whole bunch of books I'm going to share with you today. Um, I think there's probably 10 of them. And I'm just going to put them all in one video and share a little bit about each book with you. Um, as many of you know, we homeschool, we always have, and some of these books are absolutely amazing and I will keep for a long time to use with our school stuff. So I'm going to start with the first one, tell you a little bit about each book, and I'll go through them all. So this is Planes, From the Wright Brothers to the Supersonic Jet. This book is geared for kids eight, eight, ages 8 through 12, um, but I think that older kids could definitely get a lot more out of it. So you got this big table of contents here, lots of different stuff in here. A little bit of a timeline. I'm just going to flip through a little bit of it for you here. The parts of an airliner. So there is a lot of information. So you could actually read parts of this a little at a time as your kids are interested. This is the kind of thing my son would pick out for a bedtime story to just read a little at a time. So this will answer your kids' questions like, how does a plane move through the air? What's turbulence? And what do those lines on the runway mean? as well as so many more questions in this book, Planes. So check it out. The next book I'm gonna share is Mona Lisa in New York. Um, this book is kind of a love letter to New York City. Mona Lisa is a tourist who experiences the city for the first time and finds art, love, and inspiration in unexpected places. Uh, so this is geared for kids ages four through eight. So this is just like a little story. As she goes on adventure, she meets <clears throat> Tag, a street art figure, who takes her on an adventure through New York. And it turns out that Mona Lisa does not know as much as she thought. So you see the beautiful pictures and go through this fun adventure with Mona Lisa and Tag as they adventure through New York. The next book is Sleep Cat Sleep. So this is a little board book, ages two through five. Um, so this book is just a great little bedtime story. It can be hard to fall asleep because you wanna keep playing and talking and having fun. Cat has the very problem that he cannot fall asleep. He is calmly resting and then you open the book and you wake him up. And as soon as he thinks he can go to sleep, you turn the page and he is awake again. So just a silly, fun little board book that your kids will love. All right, the next book I have is Great Rivers of the World. This is a really cool book, guys. So this is, I don't know if you can see how big this book is, but it is bigger than most books you will have. Um, so this one is geared for kids as age 8 through 12. So this is just a fact-filled book for kids that blends history, geography, and culture. What river marks the prime meridian? How does the Mississippi River divide and unite the United States? These and hundreds of other facts are explored in this fun illustrated atlas of the world's greatest rivers. So if I cannot... I was just going to say, I know that there is a page that folds out into a very long one, and this is about the Nile. So this is a really cool book that I know we will for sure use over and over and over as we go through cultures and geography. So you're going to want to check that one out. This next one is called Pie for Breakfast, a baking book for kids. So this is geared to ages five through nine, but my 10 year old has had some fun with this. Um, Hazel is a young girl who loves to bake and loves to eat what they bake, even if they eat it for breakfast because the house smells so good. And one day she decides to organize a morning bake sale for her school and encourages her friends to contribute. The results of that are kids from around the world, basically um, creating foods from kids from her school creating foods from around the world, different foods that she might not have tried. And each place you look at here tells a little bit about her and what she's making. And then you have a recipe that you can easily follow. So everything in here is just a recipe to go along with it. So this is a super cute, fun book and a great way to try some different foods. So pie for breakfast. 
This next book is another one we will use a lot, Antarctica, A Continent of Wonder. So this is for ages five to eight. This is a little bit bigger book too as well, if you can see how big it is. Um, and so this is fun. I feel like a lot of times when you're studying geography, they really kind of glance over Antarctica and you don't get to learn too much about it. So this board takes you aboard the Polar Star and accompany its crew on a half year stay in Antarctica. Through the pages, your children will experience the work and life of the explorers and scientists as they study the penguins, whales, seals. They measure the depth of the ice, chart the wind speeds, examine old volcanoes, and withstand some of the lowest temperatures ever recorded. They're also going to learn about some of the first legendary explorers who first set foot on Antarctica. Let me just show you a couple pages here. So we have not used this one much yet because we will be studying this um, probably in a couple months. I'm not sure if we'll get to it this summer or if we'll wait till school starts again, but we will look through that one a whole bunch. So the next book I have is called Veggie Power. This is geared towards kids ages 8 through 12. It's an illustrated garden of vegetable delights that will make children interested in learning about what's on their plates. Um, and this is a great book as I feel like the last year more and more families are really focusing on growing their own food um, and being able to learn a little bit more about all of that. So this book is going to take you through that and it's organized by season. It's going to tell you how each vegetable is grown, how you can enjoy eating it, its health benefits, some history about it, and botanical fun facts. So here's the page about cauliflower, fennel. So a great way to introduce kids to some food that you may not eat all the time or food that you do and maybe get them to be interested in trying it if they aren't already. So that is Veggie Power. All right, the next book I have to share with you is While You Were Sleeping. This is for ages four through eight and it is a beautifully illustrated picture book about what happens at nighttime. This makes a great bedtime story and is a great way to get your kids just wondering and thinking as they fall asleep. Um, thinking about what happens while they're asleep in their beds because the world doesn't shut down but they maybe don't know that. So this takes them through bakers preparing bread and cakes, firefighters waiting for a call, hospitals caring for people, but also through the wildlife that they will see at night or would see at night that's up scavenging, searching for food. So this is a fun story. There's just a couple of the pages. So that is While You Were Sleeping. I have a couple more for you. The Greatest Show Penguin. I love the just cover of this book. It is super, super cute. This is geared for ages three through six. And it takes you through the story of Poppy the Penguin. She is from a family of circus performers and she just doesn't want to do it. Um, she soon decides that performing in the circus is not for her because she likes to feel calm and she likes to feel in control. And so as you journey with her, as she decides to tell her mom that she doesn't want to do this anymore, um, which can be a really scary, really hard thing. So this is a great story about her bravery and how she discovers a better role for her. So this is the greatest show penguin. I'll show you a couple pictures of it. A cute little storybook. All right, and then I think I have two left, and I have to be totally honest, these are probably two of my favorite ones from all of this. So this is called Alone. This is geared for kids ages three to six. Um, my 10 year old was reading it because um, she can't help but read a book that she sees and was like, This is such a cute story. And it is such a cute story, you guys. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. But it's kind of a laugh out loud funny book um, with a great message in it, though. Um, I just um, So this is Billy. Billy lives in his own little house on a hill. And he hears the squeak of a mouse, which destroys his peaceful existence. So he gets a cat to catch the mouse. But the cat and the mouse make friends, so he gets a dog to chase the cat. But they all play together, so then he gets a bear, then a tiger, and on it goes until Billy's house is so filled with animals that he has to move out. 
So he is doing all this to get himself his peace again, and suddenly all of his peace is gone. Um, so you can journey along with Billy in this super cute story of chaos and craziness. Um, but then again, see how the story ends. I'm not going to tell you because it is just, this is just super cute, you guys. The story is adorable. It's really fun to read. If you are a teacher and you have young elementary or preschool kids, this would be a fun story. And they'll love all the animals and all the silliness in this story. So check this out. It's called Alone. Um, this last one, my daughter and I have read a lot. Uh, it's called The Last Tree. It's geared for ages four to eight. The message in this story, I feel, is a very powerful, powerful message about how it is our job as an individual to protect our earth and protect what we have outside and be mindful of how we use the trees or anything else that's out there. So I'm going to show you some pictures, but... This story, you guys, I can't, I love this book so much. So here's how it starts and how they find the perfect spot in the forest. And everybody is so completely happy. Can you see how happy they are? So then they decide they should make it better because the seasons change. So they start doing what? Cutting down the trees. So they cut the trees down to build a home. And now there are less trees around them. And as they go, then the wind comes and there's nothing protecting their house because they have now cut down all of the trees. So anyways, as you go through, then they take, cut down more trees to build this lovely wall. And now all they see is this wall. Okay. So how the story goes is basically they stop being friends. They're trying to get their kids to go cut down the last tree as soon as it's big enough except the kids don't want to cut down the tree. So one day the parents go out there and they discover what's happening. And at the end of the book, they take the fence out to use that wood because they don't want to cut down the tree. And so they go through the story as that one tree begins to create a whole new forest. And so you guys, this is super amazing book. I highly recommend it, The Last Tree. Okay, so those are the books I'm sharing with you today. Um, hit me up if you have some questions. Otherwise, I really hope you'll check them out. These are so many super cute books. Some we just love to read because they have great messages. Some of them we will use for school a whole bunch. Um, so I hope you enjoyed learning about these books, and I will talk to you guys soon, all right? Thanks for watching.